So sodium diffuses across the apical membrane because of the low concentration inside the cell. And the transporters that it diffuses across are really interesting. There are basically three different types. The first is a sodium glucose co-transporter. And the way that this works is that it's a channel sitting here in the apical membrane that only lets through sodium when it's accompanied by a glucose. So if we have a sodium atom there and a glucose molecule, if they together join, they can get through this transporter. Now, of course, the same thing could happen if you had a sodium and a glucose on this side. They could join together and cross that transporter. But it's almost entirely going to go in this direction because the concentration of sodium is high out here and really low in here. So even though there might be glucose in this cell, it's going to be really hard for the glucose to find a sodium buddy to join him and to cross that channel together. And so what you'll notice is that this transporter is allowing us to take up sodium by diffusion, but also glucose. And glucose is something that we want to keep. It's how we get our energy. It's also something that we want to reabsorb from the filtrate. So with this brilliant transporter, the kidney is able to reabsorb two of the things that it needs. So that's the first of the transporters. And the second one is actually pretty similar. The second is called a sodium amino acid co-transporter. And so as you might guess, it's a very similar concept. You have a sodium atom and an amino acid molecule. And when they join together, they can cross the membrane. Once again, it could happen in the reverse. But because you have so little sodium in here, it's all getting pumped rapidly across the basal lateral membrane. It's rarely going to happen in reverse. And so the third transporter that gets sodium across this apical membrane, I'll draw it down here because it's getting a little crowded up there, is a sodium hydrogen exchanger. So sodium comes into the cell, and hydrogen is pumped out of the cell, and again, it could operate in the other direction. You could have sodium going out and hydrogen coming in. But because of the very low sodium concentration in the cell, it's going to operate mostly in this direction. So to summarize what's going on here, we have this ATPase acting as our little motor here, pumping all this sodium out of these epithelial cells. And the low concentration that that creates in these cells drives the uptake of sodium as well as glucose and amino acids and it causes hydrogen ions to be put out into the urine, but don't worry about the significance of that for now.